Some of our researchers pushed the boundaries on scientific knowledge and, and what is possible when it comes to AI and ML and train some of the brightest talent. Hi, you're watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 five five series. I'm Rachel Gregory. Today we're chatting AI with David Chan, product lead of industry at Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute. David, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Rachel. It's great to be here. Excellent. All right. So how about you tell us about the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute? What is it that you do? Amy, as it's known for in short, is a not-for-profit organization that's based right here in Alberta. We advance leading edge research in AI and machine learning. Some of our researchers push the boundaries on scientific knowledge and, and what is possible when it comes to AI and ML and train some of the brightest talent in the world around AI and ML. We seek to translate that academic excellence into industry adoption. Really, I see it as having two pillars that we oftentimes talk about. One of those pillars is our academic excellence. And on the other hand, we have industry adoption of AI and ML. And we see the two really working together in a synergistic way. Amy is part of the Pan-Canadian AI Strategy, which is the world's first national AI strategy. Can you tell us more about this and how you collaborate with others across the country? The Pan-Canadian AI Strategy, as you alluded to, was set up about five years ago, and it was the first national AI strategy around the globe. So Canada really led the way in this area. In areas where we had AI and ML excellence around the country, three institutes were set up as not-for-profit organizations to help really translate that excellence in AI and ML research into industry adoption as well. And so it's been really exciting to see some of the outcomes over the last five years and what we've been able to accomplish. And when it comes to collaboration, Rachel, uh, amongst the institutes, I think it's really nice as well that we have the three institutes that focus on different areas of expertise and really have complementary areas of expertise as well. One really neat example of how we actively collaborate uh, came up last year during the pandemic. We actually set up a center of excellence uh, with Roche and really is a nice showcase about having these three institutes set up allows us to mobilize these resources really quick and in a concerted manner to take a concerted response to something that happens really quick like a global pandemic. Tell us about the Remy program and have you seen a shift in companies prioritizing methane reduction in their strategic planning? What we're basically doing as part of Remy is leveraging our expertise in AI and ML to help move forward GHG emission reduction opportunities and ESG opportunities. And so we're looking to work with companies that are interested in exploring whether there are opportunities for having an environmental impact within their business that could leverage AI and ML and then moving those forward as part of the program. And what's really exciting to us is that while you know we're focusing on emission reduction opportunities, really it's an opportunity for companies to kickstart their journey into AI and ML. So the lessons that they'll learn as part of this, working on a GHG emission reduction opportunities will stay within them and they can leverage that to apply to other business units and other areas of priority within their business. And so we're really excited about making that happen uh, in the next year going forward. Over the next decade, how would you like to see industry and government support AI adoption? What are things that they can be doing now? I'd like to see the government continue to make investments in digital transformation and the environment. And so we'd love to see us leverage that and continue to build on that position of leadership that we're in in Alberta when it comes to artificial intelligence and in Canada. I'd really love to see companies take advantage of these types of initiatives and start to dive into AI and ML, working towards making it a competitive enabler for their business. In your opinion, how can companies better utilize AI as the world navigates through the energy transition? We see AI and ML really being a strategic investment for companies. And so it's not typically a, a one-off, really a long-term commitment that, that companies can make. There's actually been studies that have shown that if you make it a long-term investment and treat it as a strategic priority, you get better outcomes and better return on your investment rather than taking this a bit of an ad hoc and one-off approach. We have such a long history of energy excellence in Alberta and in Canada, where the energy sector, of course, plays such a dominant role and, and we have such expertise in this area that we would really like to see AI and ML be technologies that are leveraged in this area and that where we also take an active leadership role in this area. So there's lots of opportunities both 
in the energy sector in traditional areas, but then also as we're moving and transitioning into new energy sectors. One idea that comes to mind there is managing the grid, the energy grid. AI and machine learning systems are really good at managing such complex systems. And actually reinforcement learning, which is one of the techniques that Alberta is really well known for, is actually a really good tool to use when it comes to managing super complex systems like that. Thank you so much, David. It was great chatting with you about this topic and the future of AI in industry. Thanks, Rachel. It's a pleasure being on. And thank you for watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 five five series. Make sure you like this video, share it out, and subscribe to Global Energy Show's YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.